Hi there everyone, um, my name is Ari Krauss and I'm with Haven Horsemanship and I'm really excited for this video. Um, I didn't intend to do this, but when I was experimenting with um, the Edix saddle system that I just got, I ended up capturing some video of one of my horses who's had a long history of poor saddle fit and therefore behavioral issues during training due to that bad saddle fit. And I happened to get video of him our first day uh, where I hadn't fitted everything as appropriately as he would have liked. And even though in the video that you're gonna see today, you'll see that he still moves quite well. You know, he's a very fancy horse. He was um, a hunter that I imported from Germany. And he's lovely. But then you see video of the day where I'm able to fit the saddle even better um, through a wider pommel and appropriate shimming and the huge change in his affect and in the movement that he offers. Um, also, at the end of the video, um, thankfully, I don't know how, but I did end up getting similar enough angles um, at the trot and at the canter to show some of the biomechanical issues that occur um, with less than ideal saddle fit versus more ideal saddle fit. Um, so in the first clips, we'll be mainly looking at the bigger picture, you know, his affect, um, how he seems to be feeling about the saddle fit, also looking at um, overall his straightness, his balance that you see when he's in motion between the two days. And then also, again, later those pictures that will show very specifically um, how he feels biomechanically moving with the two different saddles on. So I'm really excited for this video and it's going to segue into a little series showing how I'm fitting the Edict saddle. So it's one saddle, this one saddle to 10 very, very different horses. Um, so hopefully both educational for those who just wanna be able to uh, know a little bit more about saddle fit and also for those who are looking for a better saddle fit option, um, maybe Edix is for you. For this video, we're going to be going back and forth between the less than ideal fit clips and the ideal fit clips because I want to show you the difference between the days at each gate and when applicable each direction because he does have the significant straightness and balance issue to the right. In this first clip, this is the less than ideal fit, and you'll see how he naturally really wants to lean into the right, and when I put my leg on to ask him to leg yield out, I get a bit of a tail swish, but he does respond nicely and move out to the rail. When we get to this turn, he wants to duck back in again. I put my leg back on, he moves his shoulder out nicely, so I click him and reinforce for that response. So this next clip is the ideal day, or the more ideal fit. I didn't get comparable, comparable video tracking right, but you'll see here where he really wants to lean out to the right when we're tracking left, that without any tail swishing, any uh, movement of his ears, that he moved very nicely off my right leg and didn't lean like he was in with the less than ideal fit. And here I ask him for a little bit of a yield with his shoulder, not quite a full turn on the haunches, but ask him to move that shoulder over and he responded beautifully. When I felt him get extra light on that right shoulder, I clicked and reinforced him for it. This clip is back to less than ideal fit and we're going to show our first little transition up to the trot and then how he feels trotting to the right, again his harder direction. See a tiny little bit of tail swishing there. It looked like his ears might have moved around a little bit. Uno is one that can really trick you because he's just naturally a really nice mover. So looking at this, it may look like he's moving pretty well. You see he moved pretty straight there, though did want to lean in. Notice here that even though he's stretching and I went ahead and clicked and reinforced him for lifting his back a little bit, he was a bit hollow in his back and we'll show that in more detail when you look at some stills toward the, towards the end of the video showing the difference in how his feet were landing and his, the shape of his back was. Here we are back to the more ideal fit and it will be similar where we will be looking at his walking and then his transition up to the trot and this time I made sure to do the transition right in front of the camera so we have a really nice view of how he seems to be feeling about moving forward. 
You can see here, he's staying out nicely until I ask him to shave off this under the arena so we don't squish my husband who's holding the camera. And here we go, little clucks, no tail swishing, ears come back just enough like he's listening to me, but not to the point where uh, it's any pinning of his ears. Really nice trot here. It's harder to tell in real time, but his back is rounder and he's tracking better again, which we'll look at stills from these videos a little bit later where you'll be able to see the difference more easily. Back to less than ideal fit here. You'll see a little bit of a smoother transition up to the trot. And again, I think after seeing that last clip, you'll be able to see the difference in his trot a little bit better. He's just not quite stepping up underneath himself with his hind legs the way he was in the more ideal fit. Uh, and he also just looks a little bit flatter in his top line. Back to ideal fit here. And this clip shows a little bit of him walking to the right. See, he's wanting to cut in a little bit, but not as bad. And here we do just a little bit of a shoulder yield. He was a little bit extra on that step. And then straighten out and walk on. And in just a moment, we'll transition up to the trot so we can look at his trot to the left in a more ideal fit. So again, really nice transition there. He stretched down a little bit into it. Again, I think between going back and forth in these clips, you'll be able to see pretty well. He's much more uphill here coming through his back than with the less than ideal fit. He hauls a little bit there for a moment. And then when I give him a loop in the rain, he takes it up and trots on forward. Here he even offers some deep stretching, which is usually Uno sign that he's feeling pretty good and feeling like he can come up through his back. And you can see that his hind feet are really stepping up and underneath him, much more so than the less than ideal fit clip. These next two clips will show our first transitions up to the canter to the left on our less than ideal fit day. So I actually started preparing him for a canter transition all the way up here. I was asking him to engage a little bit more, rock back onto his haunches a little bit more. Asked for trot, see some tail swishing, asked for canter, and he just couldn't quite get up to it, so just asked for walk again. And then went ahead and asked for a walk. Sometimes that's easier for him. Asked for canter. See a little tail swish, but he gets up to the canter pretty easily. Again, that's his easier side. A little disappointing that we were out of frame there, so we weren't able to see the quality of his canter a little bit better. But in this next clip, we'll see a few more strides. Again, this is the less than ideal fit day, asking for transition up to the canter to the left. So here, starting to prep for canter. Ask for a little trot. Cued canter, gets a definite tail swishing there, a little bit of pinned ears. But as soon as he got up to the canter, he knew that he was about to earn a click and reinforcement, so his ears went up. That clicked and reinforced those efforts. Here is the ideal fit, cantering left, little miscommunication there, got haunches in, but asked for canter, and almost no tail swishing right up to the canter. And I think you can see how much more round it is in this saddle fit than in the last two clips. These next two clips are our first transitions up to the canter to the right in the less than ideal fit. I think you can see even in his walk here that he's not quite coming up through his back and reaching up underneath him with his hind legs like he is even just walking in the more ideal fit. A little miscommunication. He thought lateral work when I was asking for canter. Here he understands, keeps canter, little tail swish. Ears a little bit further back than I like, another tail swish. 
but he does pick up the canner and because it was a bit hard for him I clicked and reinforced just for that effort of that first stride getting up to canner. And some scratches in love for his hard work and efforts. Well, again, this is less than ideal fit, and this is our second transition up to the canner to the right. You notice how he wants to lean his shoulder in there. Now that he knows that we're working on canner, he, if anything, gets a little bit more crooked because he's trying to get his long body arranged to be able to get up to the canner. A little tail switch there. When I was asking him to rock back, cued canner against more tail switches. Just a little bit sticky going forward. And some tail swishes. But after those couple of strides, I clicked and reinforced. Because again, that's hard for him. And especially if he's swishing his tail around and everything, I know that um, something isn't quite right. This is our final video clip. This is the ideal fit day. And this is our first transition up to the canner to the right. So yes, we're tracking left now. Um, we're going to pick up a little trot. And again, notice how well he's moving through his back, through his neck, how he's tracking with his hind feet right behind his front feet, which is hard for him. He tends to get off track with his haunches. Um, how easy this turn is here for him. Usually tight turns to the right like that are a recipe for him leaning in like he's a motorcycle. And as we come down this long side, it'll be very smooth. I'll sit gently, cue canner, and he hops right up. No you know, ears going back, no tail swishing. Here's where in most saddles he would change leads or start hopping. Here's the long side where it's difficult for him to stay straight. And he actually stretches down and I click and reinforce him for it. Now we're gonna switch to looking at stills from the videos to really hone in on how was he moving. Something I've learned actually really from a gated horse that is with me is that it is hard to see in real time what their footfall really is. So when helping to rehab this gated horse I found videos and you know slowing down videos and getting still sequences from videos tremendously helpful for seeing how a horse's feet are actually falling. And that's what we're gonna be looking at at the trot here. And then we'll also be talking a little bit about his top line, both in trot and in canter. This first sequence shows trotting to the left on the less than ideal fit day. So first here, notice right front is almost on the ground, left hind is quite a bit higher than that. Next in the sequence, the immediate next moment, right front is on the ground, left front is still in the air. This means he is on his forehand. He's technically fox trotting. And then this is the third image immediately after in the sequence. Both feet are on the ground, but notice uphill, downhill, flat. He looks quite downhill to me. Here's a sequence from the more ideal fit day. He's a little bit inverted here, but notice even then how even his feet are above the ground. And then the next image in the sequence, again, notice how even they are. And here he's already starting to settle and come up through his back again. And then this is the third image of the sequence. Notice both feet are now on the ground, taking equal weight at the same time. These next images show the back lift. So here was the back lift from the less than ideal fit day. Notice how his left hind is stepping a bit short. He, he's quite downhill. This one is the ideal fit day. Look at the difference in his hind foot, how it's tracking up underneath him, and the roundness through his back, through his withers, through his neck. Here we have our less than ideal fit day, probably the nicest moment I found of him trotting. Again, this is to the left. Notice his back. This is the ideal fit day. Notice the increase in the roundness all the way through his back. He's the one that will tend to show roundness in his loin when he's truly engaged, like he is here. This is the true test for Uno, cantering to the right. So notice his top line. He's quite round for him, but nothing compared to how it was here, ideal fit day. I know the timing is slightly different of the pictures, but holy cow, he's never been that round to the right. I almost cried when I felt this. Thank you so much for joining me on this little unintentionally created case study with Uno. I hope it was informational for you, and I hope you find it valuable. As I said at the beginning of the video, this will be our segue into some saddle fit videos. Uh, first talking about what to look for for saddle fit, and then talking about 
specific to edict saddles, how you can fit them most appropriately for your horse. Just like with anything, um, especially with horses, some caveats, right? Just because your horse has one bad day doesn't mean there's any reason to panic, right? They're gonna have off days, we're gonna have off days, and that's okay. If you have things that are more consistent, um, you know, horse pinning their ears uh, or turning back and looking at you or glaring at you when you put on uh, one leg or the other. Um, if they have issues like Uno does with straightness around really leaning hard, and I mean hard, <laughs> one direction or the other, having a hard time with a certain lead. Yes, those things can definitely be strength and straightness related. Um, Uno's certainly has strength and balance and straightness related uh, challenges in there. But your saddle fit can greatly exacerbate those. So it's worth investigating. <laughs> and the challenge with saddle fit, right, is it's hard enough to get right in the first place. But then there's the added issue of keeping it right. Horses' bodies change throughout the year, depending on how much work they're doing. Um, if you have a young horse as they're growing, or a horse at its peak and getting older, um, their bodies are going to be changing constantly. So how can we address those changes without completely going broke or having to buy all these different saddles. Um, that's where I think Edix really has a great uh, answer for us um, with the interchangeable pommels and with the saddle pad with the inlays as well as the shims. So in those next videos we'll be talking about how you can use those to adjust to different horses and also adjust as a horse's body changes. So thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that it was valuable for you. I hope you didn't just waste whatever 15 minutes of your life or feel like you did. <laughs> and I hope you join us for the next videos. Again, we'll be talking about overall what to look for in fitting a saddle. And then also more specifically with edict saddles, looking at how to fit the pommels, how to decide what shims to use, what inlay to use, etc. So thank you for joining me and I'll talk to you soon.